All right, everybody, welcome back to VB Adrenaline. Uh, this is Darren Tipton and this uh, episode of The Athlete's Journey. And really excited today for our guest. We're joined with Kennedy Washington, and she's from Texas, a 2024 middle who uh, kind of celebrity after last night's match. But Kennedy, thanks for waking up early and talking with me today. Of course. Anytime. I'm grateful for this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk about last night, your high school team, all um, your performance here, your game. And then we're going to talk about your recruiting process a little bit uh, to end things. But on ESPNU, two big teams, nationally televised. What was the atmosphere like in your high school gym last night? Yes, it was definitely overwhelming. Um, it was a lot of people in there, but I feel like at the same time, that's kind of what it made what made it exciting. And it, I feel like that's what gave us motivation and energy to even come out there and play how we did, you know, and especially with the big team across the net, they're amazing. Um, it was an honor to even play them. Um, but having the support of all of our fans and all of our, you know, our student section, you know, the football team coming in and really hyped, um, it was amazing. Um, we got out there and did our thing. So the atmosphere was, it was very, it was very amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and talk about um, one thing I noticed from your game and then went back and watched some film this morning, but you know, you're a dual threat. You were getting it done offensively and defensively, which for a middle isn't always the case. Is there one you think you excel at the block or attacking, or do you try and be very well-rounded? I try and be well-rounded. Um, I've, our coach has always said, you know, block first, you know, really do defense first and then worry about offense. So I try and focus on blocking, then coming off and, you know, transitioning, hitting. Um, my blocking, um, I've actually struggled with it a lot in the past, but I've definitely gotten better since coming to Prestonwood, you know, pressing over and really getting a hand on that ball or even slowing it down for our defense. Um, and then, you know, when transitioning, hitting, just really trying to get over that block, you know, hitting different shots around the block. So, yeah, I think just trying to be good, you know, through both of them is really important for, especially as a middle blocker. So, yeah. Yeah, well, and credit to your setter. We talked about all the weapons and anybody that watched the match or has watched you knows the weapons on your high school team. But mm -hmm. a lot of high school setters don't do a great job of getting their middles involved. and. Mm -hmm. Your setters did a great job of involving you guys and giving you swings, um, which has got to be nice for all the hard work you do on the defensive end to get some swings on offense. Yes, it, it absolutely is. Even in practice, you know, she's always very vocal with us. You know, when we hit a ball, you know, she's just like, is that fine? You know, she's very, she's very vocal and she's very like, how do I say, like she listens a lot to our feedback and then she, you know, displays it you know, on the next ball, you know, even if we mess up, she tries to give it back to us, you know, both of them, actually, you know, I'm not just talking about one, I absolutely love them, our connection, it was a little rough in the beginning, you know, because we were just coming from club, obviously, but it's gotten better with practice, even in practice, Ryan, he's dedicated to practice with us, or even half a practice, which is connecting with our setters, and just really, you know, getting that timing and that connection back after club, so, I think, you know, even in the future, we're definitely going to do amazing things. And I absolutely love both of them. Uh, talk about your your team. And we talked about having to be a little bit self selfless on that squad with so many high profile players, so many talented players, but so many weapons. Um, we We talked before we started recording that, you know, a lot of you could go to other schools, I'm guessing, and have much higher stats but what's right. it like sharing the spotlight with everybody because you all have to I'm thinking I think I can actually relate to that because I I came from a school where I was like that star player I would say or like why I have more stats than where I am now so coming here I don't think I don't not I'm not even mad that you know that I get less starts or have a lower stat level because of all the talented people on this team um I feel like there's nothing to be selfless about because we're all talented. And I feel like our coaches also taught us not to play as individuals, but as a team, as a whole. And we can all get recognized for individual things. But at the end of the day, volleyball is, you know, that team sport, you know. And so I feel like just us coming together as a team, um, we we can, what's the word? Like we can, you know, do bigger things, you know, than just being individuals, you know. Um, you know, Tech Kari with being huge, you know, me being an undersized middle and just that right side, you know, 
being a little small. I feel like just us all coming together and just, you know, being on the net, you know, we can just do bigger things. And like, I don't know, I just feel like, you know, playing as individuals, it doesn't really help us. You know, sometimes we can get in our heads and, you know, kind of focus on our errors and how many balls we scored. But I feel like if we do it as a team, you know, if we mess up on a ball, you know, Kari may pick us back up and, you know, score that next ball for us, you know? So I feel like that that's really just us being a team as a whole and just not just a bunch of individuals on a team, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And a very talented team that beat um, another very talented team last evening. But what was the whole, just what was it like with TV cameras and knowing it was on ESPN, you which is great because basketball and football have done that for a while. And I think we, we made the comment that it just shows more of the growth for volleyball that now big time prep matches are on ESPN, just like football has had and basketball has had. What was it like? It was, it was an amazing opportunity. Um, I feel like, but coming into it, you know, like I said, we kind of, our coach was just like, you know, Play like you're practicing, you know, don't really think too much about it. Just have fun. And the opportunity was absolutely amazing. I felt like it was kind of like a volleyball college experience. You know, you're on TV, you're feeling that excitement and that rush. And I feel like, honestly, no one has done what our coach has done for um, this school in volleyball terms and just being a part of this program and the first to do so. It's kind of like leaving, you know, that legacy behind and creating good memories. And hopefully we can do things like this in the future. You know, I feel like after the couple of years, our volleyball program has really shined. You know, it was not just always about football, you know. Um, so it's an amazing opportunity, and I would love to do it again. And even in the future, I just hope this legacy can continue. That's one of those things you look back on when, like, you're a mom and have kids and tell them, like, and these are on all the time. You're like, yeah, I was on the first one of those ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's amazing. So uh, let's talk about, let's transition a little bit in your high school team, the great experience. Um, we cover a lot with recruiting and prospects. So uh, class of 2024 and reopened your recruitment. So you're unsigned. Talk about what's the mindset with that, kind of how you're feeling. And then we'll talk a little bit about your plan, you know, going forward that what you're looking for is you find a school again. Of course. Um, well, first off, I just want to say I'm very thankful for you know, the entirety of, you know, the University of San Diego's coaching staff, they're amazing. And, you know, um, deciding to decommit was a very tough decision. But like I said, I'm grateful that they even offered me a scholarship and they saw talent into me. Um, but I wanted to be somewhere where I can envision myself for four years. And, you know, after a long time of thinking and just talking with my parents and even my college, um, well, my club coach and my high school coach, you know, they gave me a lot of feedback. And, you know, I just saw that, a lot of things there didn't really check off my box and it's definitely a big risk like I said being a 2024 but like I said I feel like I have had all that support to really help me and carry me through the journey so um it's very hard but like honestly I'm just trying to enjoy it and just find somewhere better for me so and, and so you told me before that hey you have a list you you you're kind of started everything again reaching out to schools emailing schools checking for interest but you also talked about a lot of them, you know, have filled out. Um, so you said you're really interested and you will probably have to see what happens with the portal. Explain right. that a little bit. Yeah. Um, this was something obviously recommended to me by my, my coaches or whatever, especially Ryan, you know, he was like, you have to, might have the way to see if the portal, you know, when the portal comes, a lot of people are moving around. A lot of coaches are moving around. A lot of positions open up um at different schools so I think just waiting and like just seeing what happens will be the better option than to just you know seeing already going with what's out there right now and you know going somewhere that I might not like again you know so I think just being patient and waiting for that the opportunity to come will really help me and you know I feel like it's it's just it's a journey you know you just have to wait for it you know it's not something you can rush so that's yeah. why I'm like just waiting for that opportunity to come well, and how's your mindset been with knowing, like, well, like you said, um, 25s are committing pretty soon. Well, hopefully not for a few months. 26 <laughs> will start jumping in, right? And and how's your mindset been to stay positive, um, you know, knowing that it'll happen, but be patient with that? How, how's that been? Because that's not easy, I'm guessing. It's not, you know, but like you said, just being patient and, you know, 
just honestly taking this time to make myself better as a person and as a player. Um, I, I think I believe a lot in my skills and I know that I'm a talented player and that it can take me places. Yeah, the 25s are starting to commit. They're talented. But like I said, I'm, I feel like I'm talented too. Um, so I'm just like, you know, taking steps at a time, just really putting myself out there. It's very hard, you know. In the beginning, when I first decommitted, that's literally, that's all I thought about. I was just like, you know, I'm, I don't want to decommit. You know, I don't think I will have another opportunity out there. Um, but I feel like, you know, just like I said, having the support of my family and them just, you know, believing in me and all my teammates believing in me and then, you know, finally believing in myself, it really helped me. And so I think I'm I'm just positive about it now. You know, I'm just like, you know, I'm just trying to get in the gym, get better, get better reps, become a better player and, you know, just do bigger and better things and find the best college for me. Well, and, and if you don't mind, I'll ask one more question because you told me before your parents' involvement in helping you because the recruiting process, especially with 15, 16, it is overwhelming, right? It is, yes. And, you know, we call it advocating for yourself. And I'm guessing it's hard for a lot of 15 and 16-year-olds to talk to grown-ups and really speak what's on their hearts. So even though it's a little uncomfortable, it's not always common. Um, how did your parents help you through that process, knowing that you're going to be okay and to advocate for how you're truly feeling? Yeah. Um, Congratulations on a huge night last night. Um, it was fun. I personally, um, I tell everybody I have a really low volleyball IQ, but I do love the slide and you run it pretty smooth, young lady. So you keep that up. Um, Thank you. Match. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked about this off camera Monday. I want you to go dunk a tennis ball because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you won't have any problem with that. OK, I will. Now, now you got me excited for it. Now I really want to try it. <laughs> All right. Well, you you send us that video if you if you get it. But uh, Danny, thank you so much for uh, a great night last night. Keep it up. Have fun with your team. And we're excited to follow your journey. OK, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great day.